Welcome back to Monroe Live. So we saw a video that was going around on the internet showing some of the testing for the seeds that Tess was doing. Uh, this was some robotic testing, cycle testing, and we wanted to kind of talk a little bit about what's going on there. So let's look at a Tesla and let's look at some seeds. Now, I do believe that video said ingress, egress. All right, what does that actually mean? I'm getting in and out of the car. All right, so let's look at this opening. If I'm testing getting in and out of this car, and this is my seat, picture that is in the car. Me standing up and sitting down, that is not ingress, egress. Again, I have a door, I have everything in front of me. What do I have to do? I have to twist, I have to turn. I'm going to be applying force and I'm gonna be applying wear across this side of the bolster. Anyone who has an older SUV or a truck, some passenger cars will also know that that bolster takes an awful lot of wear. It ends up tearing apart, the stitching tears. If it's a fabric seat, the fabric wears down. That type of testing is really, really hard. Not even testing, that type of use is very, very hard. So what is this robot actually doing? All right, if it is ingress, egress, that form, which is that human form, is twisting and moving as it is coming in and out of the seat. So it is applying pressure, but then as it is moving out, it is rubbing and applying pressure on the bolsters as well. So that's one form of testing. However, is that all of the testing? No. Also, we do have that seat form that's just going up and down, uh, pressing on the seat. Why is that important? Let's look at a seat structure. So in this entire sandwiched assembly, we have our cover and we know that we are rubbing on this cover. It is causing wear on the bolsters. It's causing wear on the material. We know that we have foam. That foam is going to wear down over time. Uh, it can break down, it can collapse. What happens if this collapses? Well, then you are too close to the metal structure. So we wanna make sure that our foam isn't gonna collapse with too many cycles. But what about the structure itself? We have this spring suspension mat. Think about a coat hanger. If you wanted to try and break a coat hanger, what do you do? You bend it in the same spot a few times and it becomes brittle and it breaks. Well, basically I have wires, even though these are spring wires, that I am going to be loading 50 to 100,000 times. I want to see if any of these connections become brittle if the parts start to break down. So the entire assembly, not just the cover, is being tested. Ingress, egress, and then general load. All right, well, what's something else that we would test? There's a phrase called jounce and squirm. All right, I bet you just by listening to it, you can kind of understand what it means. If I'm sitting in the seat and I'm moving along, I'm trying to grab my seat belt, I'm trying to reach into the back seat, I'm trying to do something, what am I doing? I am causing force on that seat cover, on that seat structure, in a twisting motion, in a rubbing motion. In Johnson Squirm, I need to test to make sure that my materials are holding up. I don't want that cover to rip off of the foam. I don't want the foam to separate from metal structure. I've seen times where this seam, the foam will actually completely tear all the way through and this bolster breaks off. I have seen foam collapse. I have seen the covers actually tear. So we want to try to avoid all of that. Now it's wonderful being able to do that with a robot because we can go many, many, many cycles. But what's wrong with a robot? A robot, we are gonna make a program and it is going to run the exact same program. So it's the exact same use case every time for 50,000 cycles. But we're people. We don't do things the exact same way for 50,000 times. We are abusing our vehicles in very, very unique ways. So, a long time ago, when I was at one of my companies in one of the structure groups, they wanted to do a test, but they did not want to pay their outside testing company who was gonna use their robots and their um, rigs to do the official test. They wanted to do a test and say, well, let's just see what happens. So what did they do? This was the structures team. So it was the recline structure for a rear seat in a vehicle. They had a paid intern go out to the vehicle and fold down that rear seat 50 to 100,000 times. I know it took him at least three days. 
Uh, I kept going out and checking on him. Again, I was not instructor's team, and I felt so sorry for this kid as he was asked to do this for three days, continually folding a seat to try and see what would happen to the mechanism. Now, why is this different from the robot? Because normally on a robot, it would grab the seat in one location and it would do the exact same fold. But if I'm a person and I'm getting worn out and tired and I'm throwing that seat, what am I doing? I'm also providing some lateral load. It's all going to be different across that entire cycle. And they just wanted to see if there was any difference in their testing, having an actual human do all of this folding or having a robot do it. That is not something I would advocate for. I felt that they were torturing that kid. It is much better to be able to do it with a robot. Just know that when that robot program is set up, you have to be very creative and understand how your customers are actually gonna use it. And we did see in that video the seat form as it was moving in and out of the actual seat and the different paths and the different loads that it was applying. Doing that many, many times in different ways will give you the best results. Um, so I hope that you found this informative. Thank you for watching Monroe Live. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and stay tuned for our future videos. Have a good day.